So this is the spinal cord model that we use. Um, and there's a bunch of reasons why I really like this model. Um, so one of the reasons is that it does a really good job of showing you the variation in the spinal cord from those first cervical nerves all the way down to the cauda equina, that horse's tail. So I'm going to give you some of the um, major structures. So here's the spinal cord and it gets wide right up here. That's known as the cervical enlargement. And that's there because there's more nerves coming out here. This is the brachial plexus. So these nerves would form the cervical plexus. Here's the brachial plexus and that cervical enlargement. Coming down here, we have those intercostal nerves going between the ribs. And then we have another enlargement. This is known as the lumbar enlargement. And so it's the enlargement that's going to feed into the lumbar plexus. Here is the what's called the conus medullaris. It's the cone at the end of the spinal cord. Um, and right in the middle of the cauda equina is a tendon or a ligament that holds the spinal cord down, kind of anchors the spinal cord, and that's called the phylum uh, terminale. Okay, these are all on your MIPS, so if you don't know how to spell them, you'll find them there. Um, so m I mentioned this is the brachial plexus, and these nerves are going to be the median radial and ulnar nerves. Um, down here, this nerve right here is going to be that femoral nerve. And this is the sacral plexus. And this nerve right here is the sciatic nerve. Okay, so we're just get a little bit closer here. So we have the sciatic nerve, the femoral nerve. These again are the intercostal nerves. And these are the nerves of the brachial plexus that innervate the arm. Um, and this right here, I, how did I miss this one? This one, of course, is the phrenic nerve that innervates the diaphragm.